That's a perfect segue to the next topic, which is minimum wage, <laughs> which is a tough one. Yeah. I've heard some really interesting positions on this particular topic, and I go back and forth because I can see them all clearly. So who wants to go first? Well, minimum wage is not meant to be a living wage, just as a starting point. So, you know, and personally, I'm, I just don't like, I don't want to raise it, you know, at least not change with how Michigan. Do you want to keep it, get rid of it? My ideal, yes. which I know is, would be politically, a political suicide and yeah. probably not going to happen is I'd get rid of it. But I'm not against keeping where it, the minimum wage, like what we have now, which is supposed to go up with inflation yeah. with no politics involved. Okay. Out of curiosity, what do you think the outcome, the end would be if you were to eliminate it? Honestly, um, I think more jobs would entry level jobs. So like cashiers at McDonald's type of jobs would open up, but that's about it. And the individuals working these, do you think that they would be, that it would be good for society? The people taking those, as in, with expectation that they want to move up so they can make an actual living, yes. But if you're not creating more jobs that are middle class jobs or, or the higher up the ladder, you just get a whole bunch more people at the bottom and they're all fighting and it's who's the most desperate? Okay, you're the most desperate, so I'm going to pay you the least. You know, this other person wasn't quite as desperate. And they wanted $5 an hour. You were willing to do it for four, so you're going to get four. That person who wanted five is now out of luck. And it, it's you have a power discrepancy when it comes to employers and employees. The employees don't know how much value they are actually generating for the entity. And so if... You, the employer, in theory, knows, okay, I need, you know, this much staffing in order to generate, you know, to provide the services and generate the revenue. Um, you know, all I think the outcome would be is a drastic increase in profits for those businesses. They would be able to put a lot of downward pressure on wages to say, hey, if you don't want to take this cut, you know, this other person on the street is willing to work for even less. And so, you know... Yes, those individuals working those jobs right now, they want to move up the ladder, but it's not like there's opportunities for everybody to move up the ladder. We are in a system where the middle class has shrunk because not enough middle class jobs exist. So if you're then not going to have room for them to grow to, but also cut out the bottom where then they have a lot of room to fall, that's all that's going to happen for the outcome of more profits for the business owner. Okay. This is how I see it happening. Uh, so we get rid of the minimum wage, which, which opens up more jobs for people to gain experience. I then, you know, let, let's use me. I then go sit to my boss and say, hey, I want a raise or I can get this other job that's paying more. Your choice. So you kind of take the power back a little bit more. A, that assumes there's another job that's paying more. B, yeah. it assumes that you're not expendable and just, you know, bring in the next person who's willing to work for that little amount. If it... Oh, on every job you're expendable. So right. <laughs> let's be honest. All right. So let me put forth my Please. proposal for the minimum wage. I would like to see a tiered minimum wage where it starts out because, okay, as a general philosophy, I think anybody working minimum wage full time should be earning enough income that they no longer need government assistance. Because if they are going to qualify for government assistance while they are working full time, then all that means is us as taxpayers are subsidizing the employer and their profits. And, and they didn't pay the worker enough so we as taxpayers had to step in and kick in so that way then yeah the employer now are there jobs out there that would be eliminated if you increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour yes 
But those jobs are in theory then not creating $15 in value for the business. If a if the job itself is integral to the business where it is needed in order for it to operate and you know it its existence then is generating enough to justify a $15 an hour cost of labor, it's going to continue to exist. If it if it isn't bringing in that value, then yeah, it's going to go away and that's a shame, but we shouldn't want jobs to exist that are so little in value creation to a company that it also then requires us as taxpayers to be subsidizing it. I, I don't see the net benefit to society from those existing. I would rather it be that, okay, you're working minimum wage full time, you're guaranteed an income that is going to give you enough to survive on. I would like to see a two tier though, where you start out the minimum wage is let's say $14. And then it's after either 30 days employment or a hundred hours worked that it jumps up to 15. So you have that interim period of their, the employee is learning the job is gaining the gaining value to the company and the company is able to evaluate the employee. Is this actually somebody that I want to continue to have work for me and all those things at the end of it, after a month or a hundred hours worked, the employer has some incentive to fire that person to hire the next person at 14, but not really. I mean, do they want to go through the hassle of bringing in a new employee and having to train them? They front load a lot of their labor costs of, you know, resources on new employees. So they don't, have an incentive to go out and get a new employee just for a temporary, you know, dollar cheaper um, salary. At the same time, the employee, you know, they they get recognized immediately. Okay, you've you've earned this. You've already got a promotion. You've made it past your you know interim period. I think that's a healthier system. I think it's a good middle ground of figuring out. Okay, you know, what is an appropriate second tier for minimum wage and then have the entry level tier one dollar beneath that and, just uh, as so a trial you're, period and you're pegging that also to inflation yes. over time yes absolutely yeah see the problem i have with that is though these minimum wage jobs are supposed to gain give individuals experience they're not designed you know, if I if I go to McDonald's, I can expect to start on the low, low, lowest level, right? And I gotta have that drive to want to improve myself. If I don't, I shouldn't be making more money than so. You, know. you understand where I'm trying? Where I'm yes, going with that? But that's that has a lot more faith that the status quo is a true meritocracy where if you just put in hard work, you're going to be rewarded. And I, think- and I understand that hard work doesn't guarantee results but you can't are not going to have results without the hard work so you know i i I get that i'm not trying i'm not living in a fairyland (laughs) but if it's a job that you want to see exist like that cashier at mcdonald's if you as just the customer you would rather see somebody working there behind the cash rather than having to use a computer wouldn't you want that individual to be making enough money that they are not also living on government assistance and barely struggling to survive. Like I don't want to come across anybody in my day-to-day life where they provide value to me as just a member of the community. I'm going to the store, I'm buying whatever. I'm happy to see them there. I don't want to see anybody who is, is not living at least on a sustenance level of income. I just, that, that, that is not the community I want to live in. See, if somebody's providing value to me, then I have a responsibility to be charitable to them, which is something I strive for. Like last time I went to McDonald's, you know, one of the cashiers came up and helped me. I gave him five bucks, which was more than what he was worth to me. But that's like a tipping society. Yeah, yes. And okay. I, like, I almost want to do this again because yeah. my head is popping now with what about part-time versus full-time? Cause I know plenty of people that are working like three part-time jobs. Yeah. They're getting in their 40 hours, but not in one place. But yeah, so in the interest of we are now out of time, I feel like you should both have the opportunity to say some parting thing. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. I'll just say that, yeah, I I 
had a great time. I think this is worthwhile for the voters. You know, anybody who is observing this and going to see both of us on the ballot, I think they'll be able to make a much more informed decision, uh, at least about choosing between us. Yeah. Um, sadly, our you know other opponent is not here. It'd be nice if she was. Yeah, I'd agree that I'd love to see our Republican opponent in this room with us. And, you know, I really thoroughly enjoyed this. You know, it kind of helped got me to know you a little bit better and kind of helped me uh, develop what's going on in my head a little bit. 